to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to enable all disabled trigger in SQL Server database. So let's go to SSMS and take a look. Right now, what I have here, I have created some triggers on different data uh, tables uh, in the sales database. Now I have a trigger on the customer and uh, this is disabled as you can see that this is a red mark here and then there is an other trigger on the sale person and uh, that's also disabled and sometimes uh, it doesn't show you the current uh, status or the state of the object you can always refresh it to get the current state of the object so it is disabled right now we can also use sys.triggers and sys.tables system views to get the information so I have this query where I, I'm getting table name schema name and trigger name and I'm also getting is the trigger is disabled or not by using is disabled column from the uh, sys.triggers system view so if I run this one this is going to give me information regarding all the triggers which are disabled so right now I have the two triggers they are disabled so I have to use here if I want to get only disabled triggers so I will be using and trg dot is disabled equal to one so that's how I will be getting all the disabled if I, I don't care I want to get enabled and disabled I can remove this and part and this will give me the information of the triggers next part is how I can disable them one thing I can once I have the list of the triggers I can go back here and just right click and enable it once I do it I can rerun my query and I will see one uh, trigger is enabled and one is uh, disabled other way to enable your trigger you can use uh, enable trigger and then trigger name in this case what we have here we have a trg customer and then we have to provide uh, on the schema and table name so uh, actually if you do not provide dbo it will be by default but i like uh, to put uh, the schema as some time on the table can be existing in different schemas so it's good idea to provide the schema with table name so if you will use this statement enable trigger trigger name on table name this will enable our trigger so now it have enabled both of them the first one we did by GUI and second one we did by the statement here so both the triggers are enabled the next part is let's go back and disable them real quick so we are going to disable we can use the disable trigger and this is one way to go and uh, if uh, we are we want to go here and uh, do by GUI we can use uh, GUI so right now I have disabled both of the triggers again we want to write a script that can enable all of the script maybe uh, all of the triggers maybe there are 100 or 200 uh, uh, triggers and you are want to enable them after your ETL job is finished so here I have created a script that will be using a cursor and that will be looping through the table names and triggers which are disabled and it will enable them so I have the variable here if you see I have trigger name uh, I have a table name and schema name these are the variable I will be using uh, in uh, my dynamic SQL to enable the trigger as uh, these, these are the three main components we need uh, to enable uh, our trigger we need uh, a trigger name a schema name and a table that's why I have uh, declared three variables uh, so I can uh, uh, use them uh, in the cursor next part I'm declaring a uh, cursor and that cursor definition is uh, I'm getting table name uh, I'm getting a schema name I'm getting a trigger name and uh, I'm getting those information from sys.triggers and uh, sys.tables uh, system views uh, and I'm getting uh, only the triggers which are disabled and they are not uh, Microsoft uh, shipped they are not system uh, uh, triggers so uh, make sure you don't want to get the um, system triggers and enable them or disable them whatever the sta state they are just leave them alone so if we run this one we get all those triggers which are disabled these are the triggers these are the table names and this is schema and they are disabled now we need to enable them so we are opening a cursor and then uh, we are fetching uh, the uh, data points from the very first row in these uh, three variables we are 
fetch in a table name, schema name, and trigger. Next, uh, we are looping through and keep looping until we have uh, the records in the cursor. So once we don't have the uh, records in the cursor, it will not go, <coughs> excuse me, it will not go in the loop anymore by using this condition. Now we have, uh, uh, we have declared a SQL, that's uh, uh, where I'm gonna build my SQL statement. So I'm saying set SQL is equal to enable trigger and then providing the trigger name and then uh, on the schema and table. This is exactly like this. So I want to build uh, these uh, statements uh, for all of the disabled triggers. So that's why I'm using it. Then I'm printing the SQL, then I'm executing the SQL to uh, enable the triggers and then I'm printing a message telling okay the trigger is uh, enabled correctly or successfully. Right now, let's uh, put the comments here so we do not run the statement itself, uh, but we see how the statement will be looking like. So it will be looking like this. Uh, we have enable trigger, then we have trigger name, and uh, then uh, we have on class, and uh, we have a um, schema name here, and then we have a table name here. So this is how our SQL uh, script will look like. One, one thing I have, uh, I could have make a this uh, SQL script better uh, instead of just putting uh, here I didn't put uh, the parentheses sometime on the table name could have a space between them so that's uh, that's where it will fail because it will not be able to find that um, table so we want to have this maybe parentheses around the schema as well if you are not sure your schema will have some space uh, you know maybe DBO uh, maybe it is a sale uh, region so and if it is a sales space region it will fail so you want to put the parentheses around your uh, table names and the schema name uh, if you feel like there would be chances that they will have space uh, in between them okay so now let's enable this SQL statement right now what we see if I run this statement it is showing me my all my excuse me so if I run this one with the press F5, I will see all these are disabled. Now I'm gonna run this um, cursor and enable all of them. So we ran them successfully, it worked. Now let's go back and run our query and take a look. Now it should be enabled. So the uh, triggers are enabled now. If you see here, still it is uh, showing a, a red down arrow because they are not freshed. So you have to hit the refresh button so then it will show you the current state. So that's how you can enable all the disable triggers uh, that, that you have um, disabled maybe uh, before the loading uh, data in, by using SSIS job and you want to enable after the load. Uh, the scripts will be available in the description as well as I will be put, uh, put the post uh, link from where you can copy and paste these uh, scripts. Thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you next.